Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you okay, now. I'm sorry about that. Good morning, everyone. So thank you so much for uh, inviting me to take part of this awesome um, symposium today. And I'm going to talk about uh, my experience as a grad student in entomology and um, a little bit about my job as well. Okay, so um, I'm gonna first uh, introduce myself. Where do I come from? What has been my path to education? Why did I end up studying entomology at Penn State? Uh, my experience in grad school, uh, my job, the current job I have, and uh, what is what is it like to be an assistant professor? Okay, so I come from Colombia. Um, this is um, I was born in the rural area of, of Colombia in South America, uh, in a very geographically isolated place. Uh, so the closest village, this is, uh, if you can see the, I don't know if you can see my mouse. So this is the, um, um, this point is where I was uh, geographically born. And the closest village was, um, or is, three hours away by foot or two hours away by horse. So there were no roads. Uh, we didn't have electricity. Uh, there were um, there were some primary schools in the rural area, and kids had to walk there. But for kids to go to school, they needed to have certain age so that they could physically walk back and forth every day. And in my case, my uh, the closest school was a few miles away. So and the closest city from there. Uh, where people could get higher education was eight hours away and is here in um, in, ye in yellow. And so eight hours away by, by bus. Okay, just to have, just to, so that you have an idea. Okay. So under the circumstances I was born, education was really not an option for me. Um, as long as kids learn to read, write and do basic arithmetic, that's all we needed. That's all a human being needed there. Uh, in fact, education used to be seen as a lazy path. It was uh, seen as an excuse to avoid working in the farm. So there wasn't really a value of getting educated at that time, at, at least not in my community anyway. So um, why did I even consider this? I, in my case, it was more, um, it was an inner passion. It was uh, a need. I, I just felt I love learning. It was something I just, I just love and I wanted to do. So I just couldn't, couldn't help it. And um, so that's how I felt at that time. And that's how I feel like now. I haven't, that hasn't changed, gladly. So my path to education wasn't a straight path. Um, I it wasn't all planned out from the beginning. I had no exposure to any of any possibilities uh, that education could bring. I didn't have any guidance either. I didn't have any relative that has any education at all. So I have been figuring things out as I go. <laughs> I have made mistakes, but uh, these are good. They, they all come with a great learning experience. So, okay. So I did my um, primary school rurally, and then I moved to the closest village, which is in this picture here, uh, to work and study. And that's where I did middle and high school. And then in Colombia, every student has to present a standardized test. So during the first, sorry, during the last year of high school. And the scores of this test, along with GPA and some uh, program specific tests, are used for admissions to college. And in Colombia, there are public schools and there are private private schools. So the public ones are very affordable, they are inexpensive, but admission is very competitive. 
So I obtained a pretty good score in this standardized test and I got a government scholarship and that's how I was able to make my way to college where I study agronomy. Originally, I wanted to study biology, but that wasn't even offered where I was. So I study agronomy, it was the closest uh, discipline uh, in that university. So as an undergrad, I got involved in research. I was fortunate to be geographically close to one of the very few research centers in my country, uh, which is the Colombian Center for Coffee Research. And over there, I worked with this fascinating insect, it's the coffee berry border. This is a very small beetle that feeds on coffee berries, and it is the most important pest in coffee, in the coffee industry. So during my time in this research center, I learned techniques in molecular biology. I was able to use fancy equipment that was not available in my university. And I was truly involved in research for the first time. And this is me analyzing uh, fingerprints for uh, different populations of genetic fingerprints for uh, different populations of the coffee berry border. Soon after I finished my undergrad program in agronomy, I had this wonderful opportunity to travel to the US as a visiting uh, scholar in a research center in South Florida. And over there, I worked with avocado lace back this insects over here, they, uh, my project was to find natural enemies of these insects. And so there are some insects that prey on other insects and then they can be used for uh, biological control. So that's, that's what I was looking at. I was looking for biological controls of these pests of avocado. And I was lucky to find a new predator that turned out to be classified as a new genus and new species, new, new to science. And this publication came out of that work, which was a pretty awesome uh, experience. Okay, so after this experience, I returned back to my country and I worked for three years at the same place, the Colombian Center for Coffee Research. And during this time, I really focused on getting what I needed to go to grad school. I continued doing research full time and at nights and during the weekends, I worked on improving my English. And then I, I really had to improve my English because I couldn't apply to grad school otherwise. So at the same time, I looked for scholarship opportunities everywhere in the world. Uh, because in Colombia, it wasn't an option for me to study there because it's very expensive. Grad school in Colombia is uh, very expensive and students are not sponsored, so they have to pay for everything. And in my condition, I was that was just not even something I could think of. Okay, so I applied to Fulbright. And I was fortunate to be selected as a Fulbright scholar to do my PhD in the US. And I could study in any university in the US. I just needed to be admitted to a program. So why, why Penn State and why entomology? Let's, let's go back a little bit. So the reason why I study entomology is actually because I love plants. I always have. So in my house, you're not going to find insects being anywhere. You're going to find plants. <laughs> and um, I find I just find plants so humble and so powerful at the same time. They are, to me, they are extraordinary creatures. They are uh, plants and plant-like organisms are the primary producers of resources needed for other organisms. They are at the very base of food webs. And to me, they are just wonderful organisms. And because I love plants, I wanted to specialize in a plant protection discipline, right? And within this area, there are two main programs, and that is plant pathology and entomology. And from these two disciplines, I feel that insects are way more charismatic, so I went for entomology. Um, okay, so, but why Penn State? 
I was admitted to three other schools, but I chose Penn State because the entomology department here has a number of faculty that are working on insect plant interactions. And that was perfect. To me, that was perfect because I could work with both plants and insects at the same time. And also, so that's the, the, the academic reason. Uh, there is another reason why I came to Penn State, and that's because I wanted to experience the different seasons of the year. This is something I didn't grow up with, and I was so looking forward to see snow, to see fall. All of that to me was just, I gotta leave this. Okay. So what, what is grad school? So grad school is definitely different from college. That was like the first thing I learned. Uh, there are some requirements, but um, th there, there is also some flexibility. So usually students need to take some core courses, but there are some electives as well. There is uh, teaching opportunities, and there is also opportunity to to have some service to the department, to the community, outreach, and research. Research is a big part of grad school. Grad students need to do research and must succeed in that in order to finish their program. Uh, the structure, again, is flexible, and the time to finish grad school varies depending on a, a lot of things, but most especially on how the research project goes. Okay, so I split my um, experience in grad school from a personal perspective and from, a, from an academic uh, perspective. So from a personal side, um, I have to admit that I was lost. I was somewhat lost in my first years, and that's because it was a huge cultural shock. It was very different things here are very different from what I experienced in my country. I didn't realize early what grad school had to offer. I didn't realize that until much later. Um, but what did really help me face this cultural shock was being surrounded by great people. The Department of Entomology, faculty, students, staff, offered a very supportive and inclusive environment. They were patient with me, they knew, they understood I was an international student, and they made me feel that I belonged there. So the department was my home away from home. It was, it was wonderful. Um, so despite my color, my accent, my struggles with language and all of that, I always felt safe. I felt respected as a person. I felt respected in a way that I never felt before in my country. And uh, during my grad school, I also made uh, good friends that I were still friends today. It was, to summarize, to me, it was a life-changing experience, not only for me, but also for my daughter. And I truly love my time in State College. So this is my daughter. Um, this is when we first came in and this is when we left. So one of the most challenges, challenging experience in grad school was actually time management because I was a full-time student, a PhD student, and then I also had a little girl that required a lot of time. So like, gladly, uh, there are daycares and they cost a lot of money, but they are the cares, they are available, and they uh, just kept her busy while I was studying. So that, 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 that was good. And I also want to believe that coming to the US was a great experience for her as well, because she was exposed to so many things that she would have never been in, in Colombia. And I think this was, this was overall a great experience for both, for both of us. Okay, so from the academic side, uh, the courses, they took some time, but they, weren't, they were not really difficult to go through. Um, I had the opportunity to be a TA, so I could experience how undergrad education was here in the US. Um, I had opportunity to be part of some department committees. That was good. 
opportunity to participate in scientific conferences. And uh, research, research was challenging, but it was also rewarding and very exciting. So I, I did enjoy my, my academic experience in Penn State. Okay, so how do you guys could help me with my career? It was essential to advance my career because I gained more knowledge in my area of study. I was exposed to uh, different steps involved in doing scientific research from writing a proposal to come up with a publication. I was exposed to teaching. I was, it, it helped me approach things in a holistic way. So it changed the way I think, or I used to think. Um, it, it opened my mind to new ideas, to opportunities, to directions. It, it really is something that just come along with the whole experience. So after I finished, I went back to my country because I did have an agreement with Fulbright that after finish my degree, I had to come back and work in my country. So I did not do postdocs or anything like that. I just went back and worked as a research scientist in which I did um, research of uh, pests of coffee in this, this time pests that fed on coffee roots. And then I also did extension in which I transferred the knowledge that was gained through research uh, to farmers and um, extension educators for that knowledge to become useful to, uh, for them. Okay, so my current job, I am an assistant professor and I am a, so technically I am a faculty member of the Department of Entomology in University Park but I am also, I'm not located in the main campus. Penn State has 20 different campuses. I am located in Erie campus. Uh, so I am over here. I am part of the um, biology department in Penn State Bering. And I am also part of the Lake Erie Regional Grape and Research Extension Center, which is, it is an agricultural extension, research station that belongs to the College of Ag but is located in Erie County. So what it is like to be an assistant professor? Well, it depends on the appointment. Um, I have the, all of this. <laughs> so I have to do some teaching, I do some research, I do some extension and I do service. And the, the weights change uh, for the, the position in, in when they are posed, they're different and also, Often people only get assigned to two of these um, uh, appointments. So it, it changes and your time is spent differently depending on the research appointment and the appointment that you get. Okay, so what does it take? So when for teaching, we need to develop courses, uh, prepare classes, deliver lectures, grades, um, do office hours, mentor students. So I mentor and we can mentor undergrad, we can mentor graduate students. Um, for research, research is, is just generate knowledge. So we lead research projects, we publish results, we write and administer grants. And for extension, we educate the stakeholders, provide technical support, and prepare educational materials to do that. And service can be is internal and external to the university. And behind all of this, there is an, a, another part that is administration. So we, we become administrators too, because we need to deal with personnel. So we need to deal with payrolls, wages. So we need to buy stuff. We need to purchase things. We need to even be aware of how to be main to do some maintenance of equipment, how to repair things, the paperwork, take care of our emails. So it's kind of a busy job. Um, so in my opinion, the demands are harder to balance than the demands of grad school uh, as a professor. It, it requires a lot of organization and it requires a ton of multitasking. Those are basic skills that are needed for this job. But it's also, it can be very rewarding. Um, I, the most rewarding thing that I find is uh, with my students, with my graduate students, mentoring them, helping them um, grow and also changing their lives. That, that's big, that's huge. 
so in my opinion, this job requires a life commitment to be successful. And we gotta love it. If we don't love it, we probably won't go anywhere. And not all of it is work. We also need to make time to have some fun. This is me and my graduate, one of my graduate students in the Canadian Rockies. And this is part of my lab. My lab is all split everywhere, but this is part of it uh, in um, enjoying an afternoon in the lake eating. Okay, I think I went a little bit over time, hopefully not too much. So I'll be happy to answer questions later today. Thank you.